Season 7, Episode 4, Spoils of War, left us with the eerie image of Jamie Lannister looking like he's about to drown, weighed down by the lions of his Lannister family armor. As we figure out whether he could really be dead or alive, the cliffhanger leads us to look back at Jamie's character development over these seven seasons to see who he's become and if the show could really be done with him just yet. Jamie Lannister is among the most popular characters in Game of Thrones, and that's a curious fact given his completely unsympathetic introduction, the things I do for love, and the countless questionable deeds he goes on to commit. Within two seasons, he's committed incest, attempted child murder, and cousin killing. There's no kind of killing that doesn't have its own word. Cousins. Yet from the third season on, Jamie's character takes a turn. He appears to be redeeming himself, behaving like an honorable man. Yet questions remain. Has he truly changed? Is his goodness for good or just a flirtation with another version of himself that can't really last? Your bed must be lonely. Is that why you came? I'm not at my best, but I think I can be of service. Yeah, slip out of that gown and we'll see if I'm up to it. <coughs> A crucial turning point for his character arrives with the sudden loss of his sword hand, permanently stunting his ability to fight and challenging his identity as a warrior. The wounded Jamie, minus a key piece of himself, gradually appears to become more of a man. And how many lives have you saved? Half a million. The real birth of the new Jamie comes through his relationship with Brienne. We witness the first sign of human Jamie when he talks the Bolton men out of raping Brienne, seemingly out of basic decency honor unbesmirched. But basic decency is significant for Jamie, as so far he's been happy to commit egregious acts for even limited expediency or self-gain. He then goes on to reveal begrudgingly that he's had a sense of decency all along, that he stabbed the Mad King in the back to save King's Landing from destruction out of noble concerns for innocent lives rather than as an act of dishonor. He starts showing redemption through action when he puts himself in harm's way to save Brienne from the bear pit. After this point, the two sides of Jamie, the Lannister and the human, are embodied in his two most significant relationships, his love affair with Cersei and his friendship with Brienne. Like Cersei, the Lannister in him is beautiful, self-serving, superior, and ruthless, allowing no room for human weakness. Significantly, when Cersei first sees Jamie without his hand, she rejects him as less than the former Jamie she knew. Everything's changed. You come back after all this time with no apologies in one hand and expect everything to be the same. Like Brienne, the human Jamie is dedicated and chivalrous. If you were a woman, you wouldn't resist. You'd let them do what they wanted. If I was a woman, I'd make them kill me. I'm not like the gods. Following the death of Joffrey, Jamie forces himself on Cersei in a disturbing scene that departs from the same scene in the book significantly and that many interpret as rape. Jamie's violent behavior complicates the picture of the developing humanity we've been seeing, although it's clear at least that his uglier and human side comes out around her. Yet while the siblings resume their affair after this, the other, human Jamie continues to act against Cersei's will. He personally arranges for Tyrion's escape, an extreme betrayal of his sister in favor of humanity or doing the right thing. Yet the human in Jamie, with this reawakened emotional sensitivity, also turns him even more into Cersei's tool. Through their shared loss, they forge a bond stronger than ever. He appears to love Cersei more than his own goodness, perhaps even more than life itself. In season seven, Jamie's loyalty to Cersei is all-consuming and unconditional, as if her faults are irrelevant to him due to his addictive love of her. Yes, I'm sure Queen Cersei's reign will be quiet and peaceable. Oh, stranger things have happened. Like what? At the same time, his failure to argue back or bother contradicting the many criticisms thrown at Cersei is a tacit admission that deep down, he's not blind. He sees her accurately. You love her. You really do love her. You poor fool. She'll be the end of you. Possibly. Not much to be gained from discussing it with you though, is there? The first episode of season seven gave us a fascinating scene between the twins, as Cersei speaks of a future dynasty, and Jaime gives her an aggressively puzzled look, as if to say, with what children? Our children are dead. We're the last of us. A dynasty for us, then. He chooses to keep supporting her, yet he's aware of her growing madness. 
A key prophecy in the books predicts that Cersei will die at the hands of a little brother. The most obvious suspect would be Tyrion, who hates his sister. But some fans believe Jaime may ultimately fulfill that prophecy, possibly in an effort to save the world from Cersei, which would be reminiscent of his murder of the Mad King. If there's truth in this prophecy, it sets up a dark climax to Jaime's final choice between his two personalities. At the end of the Spoils of War, Jaime sees a defenseless Daenerys right in front of him, and he willingly sacrifices himself for the chance to win the war for Cersei. It's a classic move for the chivalrous knight, which is a trope Jaime mostly subverts. But Tyrion's broken-hearted words to his brother Flee, you idiot. express that to Tyrion, Jaime's unbreakable Lannister loyalty is blind stupidity, embodied in the image of the knight charging into the mouth of a dragon for his love. Jaime's behavior here even reminds us of Jon Snow's record reckless yet lovable heroics in the Battle of the Bastards. The final moment of Jaime in the water is a callback to Bran falling from the tower in season one, our most significant introduction to Jaime. And now we witness another stupid thing he does for love of Cersei. Given how much Jaime still has left to do in the show, the shot in the Spoils of War is most likely not the literal death of Jaime, but a metaphorical one, telling us he's as good as dead eventually. And it foreshadows that the ultimate cause of his demise is the one predicted by Olenna, the heavy burden of his loyalty to family and Cersei, like the lion armor will weigh him down to a sad, isolated end. Water can be a symbol of love or emotion, so to drown signifies that Jamie's addiction to Cersei will destroy him, one way or another. Still, he's got a lot left to do in this story. Jamie's even become a recent favorite with fans to be the character who ultimately fulfills the Azor Ahai, or Prince Who Was Promised, and Lightbringer prophecy. The split in Jamie's character must come to a head as he finally decides for good between his sister and his humanity. 